Oh, goody. All right, what is going on, everybody? It is Zombies here again. And today we've got some more Mercenaries PvP for you, but we're actually doing things a little bit differently today. So you may have noticed by the title, this is King of the Hill. And what that is, is it is a uh, kind of community put on mode that we've been playing over in Sign of Time stream. He's actually been doing it for quite a while. Um, this was actually my first time taking part of it, and it was so, so much fun. Um, basically, if you're not familiar with Signs, he is pretty much like the most dedicated mercenary streamer I know. He goes super hard streaming the mode, and he really enjoys playing lots of different kind of off-meta stuff, uh, really experimenting, trying to find those fringe counters to things that are very popular. And he's a really awesome guy, really kind of, I consider, a pillar of the Mercenaries community. So I was really happy to actually get a chance to try out King of the Hill in his, in his stream the other night. And honestly, these are some of the most fun Mercenaries games I think I have ever had playing the mode. And even when I wasn't playing, just watching the games was an absolute delight. So I'm going to explain how King of the Hill works now. Um, this is a post-commentary, so I did record uh, these games while I was playing, and I did not do uh, the live commentary. I might do that for next time, but since this is our first uh, King of the Hill episode, I wanted to kind of give everyone a rundown of how the mode works. So basically, you know, it's your standard Mercenaries PvP. However, the catch is, um, basically, we get a list of players from chat, People who want to participate in the mode. I think we had about 10 or so different people actually uh, participating the other night, which is great. And basically, Job done. start off, two people, battle it out. Whoever wins that first match ends up being king of the hill. And Signs actually spectates all these games and casts over them, which is awesome. Does a really good job doing that. And after person wins, they're king of the hill. Their score gets recorded, they stay, the next person in the queue faces up against them. But the, the catch is, the king of the hill is not allowed to change their comp. So whatever comp you win with, you are locked into those mercenaries and those equipments. You are not allowed to change. So the interesting about this is it's basically a format designed around testing counters. That's kind of a big part of it, and actually why Science was doing it was because he wanted to work on his uh, meta tier list for the new meta, with the new characters. And this is a fantastic way to try out possible counters that you would have a lot harder uh, time trying out running them on ladder because you can't, you have no idea what you're running into, right? Unless you're queuing into the same opponent over and over again, maybe then you get an idea. But if you're running into a lot of different players, it's hard to really test a counter comp because there's no guarantee you're going to run into what you're trying to counter. So the cool thing about this mode is it incentivizes you to try and come up with a cool counter to beat the king of the hill, he, uh, displace them from their throne, and then you become the king of the hill and people come in and try and beat what you have. And it was just a really, really fun time. Um, I think Signs even said himself it was probably, he's done tons and tons of King of the Hill, and this is actually I think one of the first ones he's done without a ban list, because in the past um, it would get a little problematic in past metas with things like Valera, and I mean we all know last meta, the prevalence of GBT, stuff like that, but this was actually first time no ban list, everything legal, and nothing seemed to really dominate. I think the, the highest score of the night, um, at least when I was uh, hanging out, was uh, I think a 3-in-1 record. So that that really isn't like super duper high up there uh, compared to I think some of what uh, he's seen in the past there. So really, really interesting. Um, as you can see here, we'll talk about the comp a little bit. This comp, uh, basically, I knew, uh, obviously, what Wizard Beast was running, because Wizard Beast was the current king of the hill. So I came in with a comp that was kind of designed to counter them. And that's why 
as you can see, this is a very non-traditional comp, right? Like, I think this is actually the first time I've actually played with Brightwing in PvP ever. I don't think I've ever tried Brightwing in PvP before. Um, and that idea actually came from watching other people in King of the Hill and uh, from actually watching Wizard Beast stream. Uh, he was trying out a really interesting build with uh, kind of Sinestra and trying to uh, build up a just the biggest Sinestra possible on the bench using Brightwing and other units to do that. So definitely gave me a little bit of inspiration there. He actually just started streaming relatively recently too. So I'm going to include both his and Sign of Times links down below in the comments and the description. Highly recommend you check both of them out if you enjoy Mercenaries content. They're really great members of the community, put out some great stuff. And yeah, it was really fun uh, again to play with them, hang out and chat, talk with everybody, and see all these crazy comps. So you see Wizard Beast has the fire comp here, and I, if I remember correctly, the reason they're running fire is because the king of the hill that they beat was actually running the new Belinda Frost Barden. And so Wizard Beast ended up being able to beat them with a rag fire opener to shut down their frost. And I figured, well, maybe Holy with Brightwing can actually just deal with his opener while scaling my bench really, really hard. Now I know part of his strategy was also still relying on that big Sinestra from the bench, even though this version of his comp isn't what uh, isn't the one that went all in on buffing the Sinestra. So it's, uh, I figured, well, if we're going, and Sinestra was very, very popular in, uh, in King of the Hill today. Um, so I figured, well, if Sinestra is going to be super popular, we need a powerful blue for the bench. So we're actually, or not blue, we're, we need a powerful red for the bench. And who better than to fight a dragon than the dragon fighter himself, Gruul. So we're actually rocking Gruul, Alex, and Sinestra on our bench. The idea with Alex was actually to have a extra source of healing um, to kind of double up on the healing with Sinestra. And even though she has her human skin here, Alex is a dragon. So you can actually heal her with Sinestra too as a possibility, which is pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, I believe she does end up dying before Sinestra comes out. So we didn't actually get to see that interaction play out this game. But... Ultimately, she still did a pretty good job, all things considered. Um, especially with just healing, you know, keeping our stuff alive a little bit. And one thing worth pointing out is, I'm sure there are definitely going to be misplays littered throughout uh, these games. Because pretty much, with a lot of these comps, unless it's one of the, the newer meta ones, a lot of these have not been tested extensively by us. Um, so we're really learning a lot of this stuff for the first time. I'm actually running the uh, the extra damage on Gruul, so we can actually hit Sinestra for 60 damage with the crit. <laughs> and here you can see <laughs> Wizard Beast, uh, he knows that uh, Giant Gruul is a, is a pretty big problem for the Sinestra, which is kind of how he was winning a lot of his games at the end. And like I was saying here to him, this is the biggest gruel I have ever had and also ever seen. Um, so there were there were actually some some really big units here. It was just there was some crazy stuff. Stuff you would never, never see really organically on ladder because people haven't tested this stuff out yet. So if you're someone who enjoys testing and trying out new and different things. This is the mode for you. If, if you don't want to have to worry about necessarily running into the same meta deck or just the same player with over and over with how the current ladder system works sometimes, this is just a great way to, and to get a different play experience and interact with the community at the same time. So I do actually end up winning this game here. So I do become the king of the hill and basically just give my list to signs, he puts it up on stream so that the next competitor knows uh, what it is that I will be running and they can build their counter the way they want with that information. 
it's uh it's really fun it, it really reminds me in a lot of ways of uh tournament play because one of my favorite things about tournaments in mercenaries was the decision making we have in sideboards and stuff like that and i love that about the recent uh hs replay no pros here event was i think the the sideboarding and stuff in that event was so freaking cool and very was very skill testing as well so this really gave me a lot of feelings uh in a similar way but we can see we're up against uh Surajak here and they were very smart <laughs> about picking their uh counter comp here so i was like guff what's guff gonna do obviously i mean we do have our Tyrion, but they have an absurd amount of healing between the fact that they have three units that can use nature spells and brightwing on her own is just crazy healing um, that's actually something quite a few people were trying out was this idea of right wing buffing up the bench and it actually was way way better in a lot of cases than i ever expected it to be this actually uh this game actually has some of the biggest if not i think it is the biggest mercenaries i have ever seen in the game i do think i i did make a mistake at one point um it's a little less clear because unfortunately my deck tracker was was not working when i was playing um i i just got fixed today so the deck tracker overlay will be coming back for future videos um probably the next video actually but for this one it was still not working for me at the time so unfortunately we don't have it so we can't see their speed super easily but as we can see here they are faster um, the mouth speed up on nature skills actually gave this comp a really really hard time because we just we could never really snipe off their Malfurion before it could start healing up whether it was with himself or with Brightwing and so you're gonna see here they start scaling up the guff and unfortunately there's not a whole ton we have here that can deal with that because we only have one green unit so we really can't try and force down one of these blues because we just don't have the damage with this kind of comp now as you can see here i did opt to kind of try and protect and buff up the bright wing i thought bright wing was going to be my uh my kind of saving grace for this one mainly because she ends up getting off a ton of buffs for my backbench and basically the logic um i was using here was I kept trying to get through Malfurion. At a certain point, it just wasn't working, and the Guff kept scaling. I actually had to check Guff's abilities, because I knew he could taunt up and get bigger, but I could not remember if he actually has a regular attack. As we see here, yep, getting bigger, taunting up, but I couldn't remember, does Guff have an actual attack? Yes, Guff does actually have a physical attack, and we're going to see that a little bit later on, but their Guff is already at... 34 134 now as you can see we're still nice and healthy but we're not doing anything we're not really getting anywhere the only positive thing happening for us here is we're making our bench really really big which don't get me wrong not a bad thing however the opponent's also doing that <laughs> they also have a bright wing and they're using the same skill so we don't really get as much of a advantage off of that as one would normally um, because you know they have the same advantage so it kind of evens out so here I'm trying to uh, see if there's a way to kill the Malfurion here but I believe they're just faster still this turn so I have to try and protect the Brightwing ultimately maybe I should have tried to kill off one of my mercs like Tyrion earlier on because the switch in is what was going to be required in order for me to have a chance in this matchup um, i think i didn't really identify that problem until it was too late and i'd kind of already committed to my course of action so there really wasn't much of a point of trying to change it because i just i was uh too invested in what i was trying to do with this comp i was like all right i'll, I'll keep 
healing and trying to, you know, chip them down, but they are just doing what I'm doing better. And they're getting a really, really large guff while doing it. I mean, Jesus, 46, 176, that's insanity. And here we see the mouth gets so, so low, but not low enough. 14 health, but they, they, they were very, very uh, smart about timing the speed ups versus the heals and it paid off for them in spades because I could just never kill this Malfurion. I think there might have been one turn where there was a window to kill the Malfurion if I actually waited a turn and opted to not use skill 3 on Tyrion one turn and saved it for the next turn. I think there might have been a way to do it, um, but I'm not 100% positive on that. So... I guess my logic here was like, all right, I'm going to try and scale up too, because that's what they're doing. But as you can see, we're scaling a lot slower than the opponent is. And now they have a 58208 guff. And they're actually running the Iron Bark extra stats equipment, which is really interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Um, but you saw me mouse over it there. That was actually to check if, uh, if guff has a... Uh, regular attack and we can see there he does and he absolutely murders Tyrion so here I was just like well shit what do we do um what do we do to try and deal with this I mean Sinestro is the only reasonable thing to send in here because you, you you can't send a red into a field that has a 61 205 blue it's just, you're not going to have a good time. I mean, hell, you're not going to have a good time with anything coming in on a, a 65 attack unit. Um, so props to uh, Sir Jack for, for coming up with a, a really clever counter. Um, they actually have a really interesting bench, too. Their bench was Mukla, Illidan, and Tyrion, I think it was, which was super interesting. I never would have thought of this comp as a possible counter. But damn if it didn't work and totally smoke the, the counter I made to the kind of anti-frost fire counter. So that's one thing I definitely predict uh, that we'll be seeing a lot more of in this meta, at least from the early things that I've seen. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more uh, counters being viable for certain decks. And overall, I think that's a good thing for the game. Here you can see I do try and uh, get a little cheeky with it and and deal the damage but um, to the gruel but I think I figure out that I can actually snipe down the mouth get rid of all that healing I mean either way there's just like I think there's very little way I win this game here um, also because I have a gruel on the bench and even though he's really big our opponent does not actually have a, a dragon other than Brightwing and as we're going to see with Alex, these units don't do very well when they are forced to face a blue that can deal 128 crit damage. <laughs> as you would expect. So props to them for picking out a really cool counter. Um, definitely, definitely an interesting one. And obviously what I was running was super atypical, right? So it, it's cool seeing someone being able to come up with a counter for something that they've never seen before and probably just saw for the first time watching the stream while I was playing against Wizard Beast. So yeah, I definitely uh, really encourage, if this sounds interesting to you, go pop over into Sign's stream. He does it very, very regularly. I want to say pretty much daily if, uh, if the people are there and the interest is there for it. Like, he is always... He se always seems happy to do King of the Hill and... All of us, including him, were just having so much fun. Uh, I think it ended up going on for like two or three hours or something. It was like, it was a really long session. Um, and we didn't want to stop. Like, we were just having way too much fun trying all these different comps and experimenting. And to me, at least, that's what the new meta is about. And I had a lot more of an easier time enjoying that experience doing it this way rather than just grinding the ladder on day one because it gets kind of frustrating how a lot of the times the matchmaking 
in the current system just kind of throws you into the same player over and over and over again sometimes. So here we're up against Image, and also worth noting that there are some really good players playing here, like Image, top player, we have Davidson, Garrison, there, there's so many good players that do play in this, so it's a, a good experience, you know, you're actually playing against people who do very well in Mercenaries. So it's a, a great experience if you want to kind of up your play, learn how to play better. No other better way to do that than watching and talking with other players who've played a lot of the game. So the funny thing about this one here, so this is actually a few rounds later. Obviously, I lost last round, so my spot is King of the Hill, got knocked down. And a few rounds later, uh, basically Image ended up taking the spot with the, as we see here, the Valera Frost that I was running the other day. And so I was like, all right, we're going to run some fire to kind of counter that. But the funny thing was I accidentally made a mistake. Earlier, I one of the comps I was going to bring was a elemental heavy starter with Rag, uh, Localar, and Berengedon. And because of that, I switched Localar's equipment to the extra elemental health, which you might be noticing by my elemental here having 35 health instead of 15 and my element, other elementals just being really, really huge. So that was not actually an intentional decision. It's just I swapped that over for another comp and forgot I did that. So when I hopped into the game, I noticed and I was like, oh, <laughs> whoops. But, you know, just got to roll with it at that point. And it actually ended up going better than expected, to be honest. Um, it was funny. Image actually mentioned that he was totally thrown off in turn one because he didn't he didn't notice I wasn't running the uh, the extra frost damage, which is why you can see he actually went slower last turn with the Valera fan. Um, he told me afterwards the whole reason he did that on turn one was because he didn't immediately notice uh, local are running the other equipment. So that was kind of funny and kind of shows like you can even in a thing like this where uh, people can see what you're running people don't always immediately pick up on subtle things like running an item that is not always like super common like as we saw last game i've never seen that item run on guff before ever and it 100 percent basically soloed me because it made a unit that was just so big and i couldn't do anything against it but the reason we ended up going with this lead here is rag just shuts down their freezes entirely um, I, I do think I made a little bit of a mistake here, though. I should have actually aimed that at the Valera. The reason I did not aim it at the Valera was because I was worried that Valera was actually going to try and combo and stealth up, I think, was the reasoning there. But I'm actually not that, in retrospect, I'm not that bothered by leaving Valera alive, because she really doesn't do a lot to threaten this board, and we have enough AoE where we can kill her, before uh, she can take advantage of being in stealth again, most likely. So Localar and Diablo coming out, I was actually really happy to see this overall, um, because obviously we still have two of our reds out, and we have scaled a little bit of, I think, both fire and frost damage at this point. Um, no, it looks like it's actually just frost damage for now. But still, that little bit of scaling is actually going to go a long way, because as I mentioned before, we do not have the scaling item on our local R. So we are dealing less damage than you're typically used to seeing. However, they don't have to worry about playing around uh, the speeds. As you can see, we get local art here, but we do actually get some pretty decent rolls and get their Valera dead, which I think uh, was relatively important and a huge amount of damage on the Diablo there, which is pretty big, I would say. I believe their last one is Sinestra. Um, so that is why I do end up going with Gruul here. Um, actually, maybe what did, maybe I don't go with Gruul. Oh, did I, no, I think I did go Fox instead, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think I end up going Fox. Yeah, okay, that's right. Because I want to keep Gruul healthy for when... Uh, Diablo is dead, and it's just Sinestra local R. So unfortunately, I low roll on the Fox and get an ability that cannot be used. 
Um, but it's not the biggest deal in the world because now we just get to uh, get our mana blink off. Which should put us in a pretty solid position, I would say. Uh, we do have Snowball here, though. 25 damage. Pretty crazy. Um, we've been really building up a lot of that, that frost damage, so we, we have a pretty huge nuke here that we can kind of just drop on Sinestra. And we know it's going to be after she heals, so she's going to be low health from the start of the turn, and we'll be able to just snipe her down being faster from Blink Fox. Boom. Yeah, so now, and I'm, I was actually surprised the rag didn't die there, so we're just going to clean up here. Uh, but yeah, these are the games. I actually did uh, have a, a rematch against the, the person I played in the last game, and they were able to beat me with that, that same kind of uh, nature scaling comp. I was able to kind of get through a bit of their starting line. However, they had a really, really buff bench with Mukla Illidan, and it just proved to be a little bit too strong for what I was doing. But that's going to be the game. If you enjoyed it, do remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.